Hey Geeks and Gamers and welcome back to The Games That Shaped Me, a series where I talk about the games that shaped me. It's in the title. Um, this is available on YouTube and Spotify in the podcasting format. Today we're talking about something special today. Uh, I said today twice. Uh, that is because I am making this up as I go along and I just had a bunch of sugar, so I'm pretty hyped up. Um... If you've been around, you should know that I love Sega and I love Sonic the Hedgehog. I have uh, made that very clear throughout my existence here on the internet uh, and in my my existence in real life. Um, people know me as the Sega guy. It's sort of my thing. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of Sega and a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog here on this show. I will try to space them out. Uh, this will be the first Sonic the Hedgehog episode, but I will try to space them out and not over uh, do the Sonic the Hedgehog episodes. Today we're talking about something special. Sonic Adventure 2. Um, a game that a lot of people hold dear. This is a game that I often hear uh, people, this is how they got into the Sonic franchise. It's not how I got into the Sonic franchise, but it is a game that's very important to me, hence why I'm talking about it here today. Whenever I was a kid, a little wee little lad, I had a Sega Game Gear, a Sega Genesis. I watched the Sonic cartoons that came on the, the television. I played Sonic games on my Sega Game Gear, Sega Genesis. I was a big Sonic fan, needless to say. Um, now, I did get... Um, I didn't get... My parents, I believe, had a Sega Saturn, and I would run around the world in Sonic Jam whenever I was a kid. That was something that was really impressionable. I would look at the gallery and stuff and see the art, and it was really cool. Um, and I kind of moved on from Sega consoles from there. I got a 64. That was my first home console that I owned personally. That, you know, wasn't my parents. And I also got a PS1 shortly after. Uh, I didn't get a Sega Dreamcast whenever it launched or any time during its relevancy. The Sega Dreamcast was not a console I knew existed until I was in the... Uh, I was probably in the third grade. And... I went over to a kid's house that lived down the street. Um, he was a, a friend, a childhood friend of mine, and I would often, I lived right next to his grandfather's house, so I would often go over to his grandfather's and climb trees and we'd play outside and play with Transformers and do what kids do. But his parents lived down the street, further down the street, and my mother decided one day that I was old enough to walk down that damn street by myself to go to his parents' house. I had to call her when I got there, though. So that's what I did. And going over to his house, um, unlike his grandfather, we stayed inside at his house mainly. We did go outside every once in a while because he had a trampoline. But um, we would go. I would go over to that house, and I would go up to his room, and we would play video games. Uh, his parents... Um, were separated, and he lived with his dad and his stepmother. And, you know, I don't want to talk about his personal life, because I don't know what it was like growing up there, but I would like to think that they spoiled him for that reason. Uh, because when I went into his room, at the time, I believe at the time I had, it was probably, it was either whenever I had the original Xbox or the PS2. I would get original Xbox and then I sold it for a PS2. So, somewhere around that time period, whenever that was the relevant consoles in my life, I would go up to his room and he had an original Xbox, he had a Nintendo GameCube, and he had this other system I had never seen before. And he often told me that over at his mom's house, which he lived in like North Carolina or something, she had 
PS2 for him there that he played. So the kid was living the high life. I mean, maybe not in the sense of like, you know, having a, a family that's structurally sound, but in the sense of like, he's got all the f- fucking systems that were relevant at, t- at the time. Um, so I would go over there and play games with him. We played Stubbs the Zombie. We played Star Wars Battlefront 2. We played, what else did we play? Luigi's Mansion, Smash Bros. Melee. But one day, he handed me a controller for the other weird system that he had. And he put in a game, and off we went. Uh, the controller looked like a spaceship. I didn't know what to make of it. It was the controller for the Sega Dreamcast. My first time pl- ever playing a Dreamcast. Uh, he asked me if I liked Sonic the Hedgehog. And I said, yes, I do. You know, I had fond memories of playing Sonic games. And he popped in Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Adventure 2 uh, to be exact. And we played the two-player mode on that game and my god it was like an awakening <laughs> you know it's like some something deep in the recesses of, of my brain was like this this is what you like um it had a, had a loud rock music it the 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 characters ran really fast it, it was it had its own style it it felt a little more mature than the other you know, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon games that I was playing at the time. It was something special. Um, I went home that day, and I remember getting home and telling my mom about it. And sh- shortly after that, I would see advertisements for Sonic Heroes in a gaming magazine. Uh, I remember the advert very clearly. The advert had a bunch of old superheroes... And they were sitting around a computer or something um, in their secret lair or whatever. And it's, I forget what exactly the tagline said, but it was something like, uh, don't trust these old heroes, get new heroes, Sonic heroes. I was like, oh shit, I need that. Uh, This, you know what, this had to have been when I had an Xbox because I would beg my parents for Sonic heroes when it came out and we got it. I would trade my Xbox for PS2 and Sonic heroes was the first new game I got for the PS2. So that was definitely that that time in my life. Later on, whenever I was in middle school, I would go over to another friend's house. And that friend had a Nintendo GameCube. Different friend than the first friend. And when I went over there, he had a whole bunch of games. Uh, His parents were fine. (laughs) <laughs> so, he, they just bought him games. Uh, so he had, like, Mario games. He had, um, fucking, whatever, uh, Zelda games. He had Smash Bros. Melee, of course. We gotta, gotta have Melee. He had a bunch of different games that I got to try and play and have fun with with him. And I noticed he had Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I was shocked. That's that game that I played years ago. Um, at this time in my life, I didn't really have... You know, access to the internet. I couldn't look up this stuff, so I was just like, "Oh wow, that's on the GameCube, but that's so cool!" And every time I went over to his house, I would pop it in. I would play the opening level, City Escape, one of my favorite opening levels of all time, rolling around at the speed of sound. And I would play through the game whenever I would go over there. Not not like every time, but I would, you know, work on my file. I actually helped him beat that game because he was having issues with the final chapter, which is pretty tough, honestly. It's got some uh, some tough parts there. So, that was another time where I was like, oh my god, this is that game that I love so much. And I think he, he knew that I loved it so much um, because he actually gave me that copy. I don't, I don't know when. It was eventually. It wasn't too short, like long after that. I, I got my own GameCube and he gifted me that copy and that's the copy I have that's my copy of Sonic Adventure 2 uh, battle that I still own um, I'm <laughs> terrified to play it because uh, if, if it's anything like my copy of Sonic Adventure DX it's probably ripped the shreds right now same thing with my copy of Sonic Heroes that I had on PS2 that that one was gone because I played it so much um, so <laughs> if it's anything like that uh, I'm terrified to play it I usually when I play Adventure 2 now I usually play one of the um, ports to a modern console like PS3 or I have it on my Xbox Series S now. Sonic Adventure 2 is a game 
that isn't perfect. I'm not a Sonic fan that's going to sit here and tell you that the Sonic, the 3D Sonic titles are perfect because they are not, and that's okay. I, I what art is flawed. People are flawed, and games can be flawed. It's fine. It's perfectly fine to like something that has flaws. Uh, I feel like a lot of people like to jump into critiquing games, and they're looking for that perfect game. The game that does no wrong. And, you know, every game does wrong. You know? Even the beloved Ocarina of Time. I could I could go on for, for hours talking about how I feel that game has flaws. So, it's all a matter of perspective. Sonic Adventure 2 is the sequel to Sonic Adventure. You play as Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Tails, Knuckles, and that's on the light side, the, the hero side of the story. And on the dark, evil side of the story, you play as Shadow the Hedgehog, Dr. Eggman, and Rouge the Bat. The story of the game really follows Shadow. Um, it's really his game. Which, you know, what he was a breakout character in this title. Um, and it has some really mature underlying themes. I don't think it's mature in the sense of, like, like the Shadow the Hedgehog spinoff game where, you know, they're saying cuss words and their story, you know, their story about death and destruction and darkness. No, it's, it's dark in the sense of... Or, or mature, sorry, it's mature in the sense that it really makes you think about um, some some things, the way people are treated. It's uh, it's interesting. The game mainly follows Shadow as he is awakened uh, by Dr. Eggman. Uh, Dr. Eggman finds out that his grandfather, Gerald Robotnik, had a um, secret weapon he was working on. And it turns out that secret weapon is Shadow. Um, Dr. Gerald Robotnik was wronged in his past life. He was deemed to be a villain, um, which is probably where Eggman got a lot of that from. And um, he built this space colony arc that was actually secretly this big genocide cannon pointed right at the Earth. Um, and he had a falling out with the military group Gun. Gun killed his granddaughter Maria. And Shadow was very close with Maria. So Shadow only remembers Maria's death. Nothing else beyond that. I won't spoil the story because I don't want to um, spoil the story. Because, <laughs> you know, it is Shadow's arc. It's really, it's Shadow's story of, um, I don't know, learning to be a hero, I guess, in a sense. Um, and it works. It, it, it works very well. I think sometimes whenever Sonic games, especially the 3D titles try to have deep dark stories that can come off a little edgy <laughs> like like shadow the hedgehog like sonic 06 um hell even sonic unleashed i think at times can but i think sonic adventure 2 works for the most part i think its story works and, and that's because it still has fun it still has fun with the narrative and the characters sonic is still the whoa way past cool dude uh who just loves to to run and have fun uh, Shadow, uh, not Shadow, <laughs> Tails is still, um, just like in Sonic Adventure 1, is still pretty independent and, um, smart. Uh, he's not a coward like you would see him in later games. And Knuckles still is not an idiot in this title. He is, uh, very, um, instinctual. He's a very instinctual character, and I think that works for him. In later games, they would turn Knuckles into a bumbling idiot. Uh, newcomers are Shadow the Hedgehog. He doesn't really have too much of a personality other than he's just trying to figure out his place in the world. Um, and there's also Rouge the Bat, who is a snarky undercover agent there to uh, steal some jewels. And uh, of course there's Dr. Eggman. Gotta have, doc gotta have the good doctor, Dr. Eggman. And the game's broken down between speed platforming stages with uh, Sonic and Shadow. Um, these mech uh, shooting gallery stages with uh, Eggman and Tails and these treasure hunting stages with Knuckles and Rouge. I never have any issues with these. I think these um, stages types work 
very well, in my opinion. Um, I know people don't like the treasure hunting stages, but I never found them to be that annoying. I actually have fun with them. And they're fun with the two-player mode as well. Um, so, I never have a bad time playing through this game. I like the fact that if there's varying uh, stage types, and there's varying uh, ways you can go about the stages, and there's different environments. There's the city environments that are themed after San Francisco. There are Egyptian-looking environments. There is a military base. There's a spooky pumpkin uh, area. And, of course, there's the space colony arc itself. I always found that the environments were really cool in this game. Uh, some fun stories. Or a, a fun story. I was actually over at a friend's house in high school... And we were playing, I forget, we were playing something on his Xbox. I think we were playing like Borderlands uh, 2 together. And I had plugged up my iPod to his little iHome speaker thing. And we were listening to music. And I had it on shuffle. And the um, Metal Harbor theme from Sonic Adventure 2 started playing. And, <laughs> and we were both like, hey, this is a great song. And I said... Dude, I love this stage. I love Pearl Harbor. I called Metal Harbor from Sonic Adventure 2 Pearl Harbor. And we fucking lost it. That was one of the... That was uh, maybe one of the hardest times I have ever laughed in my life. It was so funny. Speaking of music, Sonic Adventure 2 has one of the greatest gaming soundtracks of all time. If you like rock music, if you like hip-hop, uh, this game is your jam. It's a fucking masterpiece. Here, I, I will play a few song, a, a few clips from a few songs to give you a taste of how fucking good this game soundtrack is. That's just fucking awesome. Um, Sonic Adventure 2, 
I don't know if another game has topped it in the Sonic Adventure. Sorry, you know, the Sonic 3D franchise, the, the, the 3D Sonic games. Uh, I think I do like Sonic Colors a little more. I forgot what I ranked them in my 3D rankings. Uh, it could change. Uh, Colors and, and Generations were great games, but Adventure 2 just, I don't know, it just has this style to it. It has this feel to it that I'm always, it always puts a smile on my face. I can't play this game and not be happy. Um, it's a game that I love, and it's a game that definitely shaped me. Thanks for listening to me ramble about Sonic the Hedgehog and Sega. I'll do more Sonic and Sega episodes somewhere down the road. Uh, if you want to hear more of my voice, maybe accompanied by other people, uh, check out the Button Mappers. That's the podcast I do with me, uh, Teddy from Majority, and Spencer from RPG Archive. Uh, it is on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And if you want to listen to me talk to my best friend Damon about whatever the hell we want to talk about, check out Turbo Dojo. It's the official Turbo Zone podcast. It is on YouTube and Spotify. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Yeah! Well, I don't show up, don't criticize. Yeah!